Hello everyone and welcome to some more remote learning. Today we're going to review regions between curves. So throughout this worksheet I'm going to do quick little reviews from the lesson and I'm going to expand upon that by working through examples with you. So this is going to be a little bit of an overview mixed with a review with helpful examples. So if we think back to earlier lessons, we found the area under a single curve by using Riemann sums. So drawing those rectangles and summing those up along the interval. Now we're going to apply that same concept, except we're going to be finding the area between two curves. And we're still going to use those rectangles. So we're still going to draw it out. It's just now that we're doing it between two curves, our rectangles are either going to be vertical rectangles in which we're integrating with respect to X, or they're going to be drawn horizontally where we're going to be integrating with respect to y. Now this may seem a little overwhelming, but don't worry, I'll walk through some example problems with you to help you understand. So if we're talking about the area of a region between two curves, with respect to x, we're going to have some function f and some function g that are continuous on that interval from a to b. Now right here, it says that f of x is always going to be greater than or equal to g of x, which is very important. That means that f of x is going to lie above g of x in our coordinate system. So the area of that region bounded by the graphs is we're going to integrate a longer interval and our interval is specified from a to b. And if we want that area in between, we're going to take the top function, so that larger function and subtract that bottom function, that smaller function. So when integrating with respect to x, we're going to take f of x minus g of x, and we're going to integrate this from a to b with respect to x. So again, f of x is that top minus g of x, which is the bottom. So our top function minus our bottom function, which gives us essentially the height of those individual rectangles. And now that we have the height of those rectangles, what do you think dx is? dx is that small little width of the rectangles. So if we have height times width, we're finding that area. And while we're talking about the area of the region between two curves, let's think about doing it with respect to y. So now I'm mixing the functions up. We're gonna have some function p and some function q that are again, are continuous, just like f and g, they're continuous on some interval, except as opposed to using a and b, we're going to now use c and d. So we know that as long as those functions are continuous over that interval, we're going to be integrating from c to d. And we also are given this piece of information that p of y is always greater than or equal to q of y. So if you think about our coordinate system now, if we have some function of y greater than another function of y, that means that one function is going to lie to the right of the smaller function. So we're going to take p of y, which is our rightmost function, and subtract q of y, our leftmost function, and we're gonna integrate this with respect to y. So now, if you can envision, we're drawing those rectangles now horizontally, whereas up above, when we were integrating with respect to x, you can see here is the height of our rectangle. So this top part would touch f of x, and this bottom part would touch our function g of x, and here is that width of our rectangle dx. Now we're drawing our rectangles horizontally this part of our rectangle is going to be touching p of y, this part of our rectangle is going to be touching q of y, so when we subtract p of y minus q of y, we get the height of that rectangle. And the width is that change in y dy. That is the small width of our rectangle. So again, right minus left times the width, or top minus bottom times the width. One is with respect to x, the other with respect to y. Now a quick note about a, b, and then c and d, they're not always given to us, but 
if they tell us to find the region between two curves, A, B will be the X coordinates of those intersections and C and D would be the Y coordinates of those intersections. But let's go over that more when we jump into these examples. So in example one, we're going to find the area of the region bounded by Y equals 2X plus one and Y equals X squared minus two. Now, I've nicely already put these graphs on here so we don't have to worry about graphing it out. But let's go ahead and label so we don't get confused. 2x plus 1 is our linear equation, so that's our blue function, so I'll label that as 2x plus 1. And then our red function, that parabola, is x squared minus 2. So our first step, our first little arrow, says that we're going to be shading the area of the region we are interested in finding using the graph provided. So if we're looking at this graph, we're looking at the region bounded by those functions. So that's the area in between those functions, which, if I'm shading that in, is going to be this area here. So that's our region, and I'm going to go ahead and label this R just to get in a good habit of that's our region R. Now we're going to find those limits of integration. And what they mean by limits of integration, we're going to find those bounds of our integral. When we find those intersection points, we'll get both the x and y coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that now. So our first intersection point occurs here. How do you find that? We're going to set the functions equal to each other. So we're going to do 2x plus 1 and set it equal to x squared minus 2. That'll give us our lower point and this upper intersection point here. So doing a little bit of algebra, I'll go ahead and move my 2x to the other side and I'm going to move my positive 1 to the other side to get 0 equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now from here to make it easier on myself, I'll go ahead and factor this. So 0 is going to be equal to what multiplies to give us a negative 3 and adds to give us a negative 2. That's going to be x minus 3 and then x plus 1. 1. Negative 3 times 1 gives us a negative 3, and negative 3 plus 1 gives us that negative 2. So now that I have it factored, finishing this out, I'm going to have either x equal to 3 or x equal to negative 1, making this equation true. And I can see that this coordinate down here is when x is negative 1, and this one up here is when x is my positive 3. Now quickly, I'll go ahead and solve for those y values since it'll take no time at all. Plugging negative 1 into either of my functions, I'll plug it into my linear 1. Negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2, plus 1 gives us a negative 1. So this coordinate is negative 1, negative 1. And then when I plug in 3, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So this coordinate is 3, 7. What I like to think about is where do we start drawing those rectangles and where do we stop? Now, if we're looking at this, if we attempted to draw our rectangles horizontally, our width technically would be dy. But if you think about drawing this horizontally, we're going to do the right function, which is the red function, minus the blue function. But we run into a problem when we get down here. If you notice where I drew this horizontal line, my right function, when I'm above that line, is still the red function and my leftmost function is blue, but down here, my red function is both the rightmost function and the leftmost function. So here, I would have to wind up splitting my integral because now I have a completely different right minus left. And also, if you notice, my intersection point is not even the starting point of where I would draw these rectangles. My starting point would be down here at negative two. So right minus left wouldn't be the best option in this case. But if we look at top minus bottom, integrating with respect to x, if we start drawing our rectangles at that point and continue drawing them, you'll see that throughout this entire region, my top function is the blue function and my bottom function is the red function all the way throughout. So this is a great example of doing the top function minus the bo bottom function. So let's integrate with respect to x. So with that being said, when I set up my limits of integration, we're going to use those x coordinates. So you can see I started drawing my first rectangle at negative one in the x, and I stopped drawing my last rectangle at three in the x. 
So from negative one to three are my limits of integration. Now, I just need to write in my top function, which is f of x, which is going to be two x plus one, and I'm going to be subtracting that bottom function of x squared minus two. And this is all integrated with respect to x. So again, you can see here is the height of those rectangles I drew, and here's that width. So let's go ahead and solve this out. Simplifying first, I'll rewrite negative one to three, and then I'll have two x plus one, but then I'm subtracting a negative two, so that would be plus three and then minus x squared, all integrated with respect to x. Now I'll go ahead and individually integrate those terms since there's just addition and subtraction between. So two x integrating that becomes x squared plus integrating three, that would become three x, and then integrating x squared, I'll get x cubed over three and I'm going to evaluate this from negative one to three, which means I'm gonna plug in three and then subtract plugging in a negative one. So I'll get three squared plus three times three minus three cubed over three. All of that subtracting when I plug in negative one. So I'll have negative one squared plus three times negative one minus negative one cubed over three. And it's important to note that you cannot forget parentheses because we're subtracting all of those terms when we're plugging in negative one. Simplifying this down, three squared is nine plus three times three, that's another nine, minus three cubed over three will leave me with three squared, so that's nine minus, so already I'll go ahead and cancel out a pair of these nines, negative one squared is one, plus a negative three, so I'll subtract three, and then I'll have plus, because a negative times a negative will be a positive, and that will be a one third. One minus three, that's going to give me a negative two, but I'm subtracting that, so nine minus a negative two is going to be 11, but then I'm subtracting that one third. Turning an 11 into a fraction would be 33 thirds, minus one third would give me 32 thirds as our area of our region. Let's continue on to our next example. In the next example, we're going to find the area of the region bounded by y equals the square root of x, y equals zero, and y equals x minus two. So let's start how we did originally and shade in that area. If I'm bounded between all of those, my red line is my y equals square root of x, my blue line, or my x-axis, is y equals zero, and the green line is x minus two. So in between all of those will be this region here. Here is my region, and I'll go ahead and label that region r. Now before we find our limits of integration, let's go ahead and think about how we're going to integrate this, with respect to x or with respect to y. Well. Let's think about drawing those rectangles. If I was to integrate this with respect to x, my rectangles are going to be vertical because that width is my dx. So drawing those rectangles, you can see that at this point here, I'll go ahead and make a vertical line. When I draw a rectangle to the left of that versus to the right of it, my bottom function is changing. You can see that my top function is always that red function, but to the left of that vertical line, my bottom function is the x-axis, where to the right of that vertical line, my bottom function is my green line, or x minus two. Now, it's perfectly fine to integrate this and split that integral up, finding the area of this region and then adding it to the integral of that area to the right, but that requires a little bit more work than is necessary. Let's think about drawing the rectangles horizontally. If we do that, you can see that where I start my rectangles up here and continuing through all the way to where I end my rectangles, I have the same right function and the same leftmost function. So I'll only need one integral, which means we're going to be integrating with respect to 
those rectangles, remember, have a width of dy, so we're integrating with respect to y. And if we're integrating with respect to y, we need to figure out where we start drawing our rectangles and where we finish drawing those rectangles according to y. So if we're looking at this first rectangle, it's going to start on the x-axis, and that is when y is equal to zero. So it's going to start at zero, so our lower bound of our integration is going to be zero, but our upper bound, we continue drawing those rectangles, filling everything in all the way until this point up here, which happens to be the intersection of x minus two and the square root of x. So we're going to set the square root of x equal to x minus two in order to solve for that intersection point. So we can square both sides, solve it out, set it equal to zero, and then factor. However, just by visualization, it looks like we're about four in the x and two in the y. So let's go ahead and double check before we do all that work. If we test out four, if we take the square root of four, because x is four, is that equal to four minus two? Yes, indeed, two equals two. So I know that this point that point of intersection has an x value of four. But remember, we're not solving for that point of intersection for the x. Because we're integrating with respect to y, we care about that y value. So I'm going to take my x value and plug it in to either equation that I just used and solve for y. So four minus two is two. Or I can look over here because I already plugged four into each of them. So my upper bound of integration is two. Now we're doing our right function minus our left function, right minus left, integrating with respect to y, but I don't want to have x minus two minus the square root of x in here if I'm integrating with respect to y, because now I'm mixing up my variables. If I'm integrating with respect to y, I want to have y variables in my integration. So what I'm going to do is solve for y for my rightmost function and my leftmost function. So my rightmost function, solving so that the function is in terms of y, not in terms of x, we're going to get that x is equal to y plus two. And for the other one, solving that for x, we're going to get that x is equal to y squared. So our rightmost function is y plus two, that linear function, and we're going to subtract our leftmost function, which is y squared and we're integrating all of this with respect to y. So let's go ahead and integrate. y, integrating that, is going to become y squared over two. Integrating two will become two y, and then integrating y squared will be y cubed over three, and that's subtracted. So we're going to do this from zero to two. So plugging in two, I'll get two squared over two, plus two times two minus two cubed over three. And then I'll subtract, plugging in zero. Well, that's just gonna give me zero. Two squared over two, four over two is two, plus two times two is four, minus two cubed, which is eight over three. Let's solve that out. So we'll get six minus eight thirds, and finding a common denominator of three, that will be 18 thirds minus eight thirds, which will leave me with 10 thirds. So 10 thirds is that area of our region bounded between those three functions in example two. Continuing on to example three, we're going to find the area of the region above the x-axis and bounded by y equals x cubed and y equals four x. Now in this case, if we draw our rectangles horizontally or if we draw them vertically, we're going to have the same right minus left for all of our rectangles or the same top minus bottom function. So in the case of example three, it doesn't matter which way we choose to do this problem. So let's go ahead and quickly do both ways. With each, we're going to start out by finding those intersection points. But first, let me highlight this region. So here's our region R we're going to find both intersection points and then find that area. Now our first intersection point occurs 
at zero, zero. We can see this by visual inspection. And if we look up here, zero cubed equals zero and four times zero also equals zero. So when X is zero, in both cases, Y is zero. So our first intersection point is zero, zero. Now this other intersection point, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work and set the functions equal to each other. So when does X cubed equal four X? Well, I can divide both sides by an X and that's when does X squared equal four? Taking the square root of both sides, that's going to be when X equals either a plus or minus two. So if this graph continued on, you would see another intersection that occurs at the value negative two in the X. However, I specified that I wanted us to look at the region above the X axis. So we're only going to find that intersection with the positive two for X. So when X is a positive two, plugging that into either equation, two cubed equals eight or four times two is eight. We know that Y value is eight. Now let's go ahead and set up the integral for integrating this with respect to X. So where I start drawing my rectangles is at zero in the X and where I would stop drawing those rectangles is at two in the X. So there are my two X coordinates of my intersection points. Now my top function is that linear function of four X and I'm going to subtract that bottom function of x cubed and integrate all of this with respect to x. So integrating 4x, that will be 2x squared minus integrating x cubed, that would be x to the fourth over four. And I'm going to be evaluating this from zero to two. Plugging in two, I'll get two times two squared minus two to the fourth over four, plugging in zero will be zero for both, so I'll be subtracting zero from that. Two times two squared is eight, minus two to the fourth is going to be 16, divided by four is gonna leave me with four, eight minus four is four. So the area between these two curves is four units. Here's a quick double check though. We just did this with respect to X, let's do it with respect to Y. So now setting up our bounds of integration with respect to Y, we start drawing those horizontal rectangles at zero and continue until eight. So we're going from zero to eight. Now we're integrating again with respect to Y. So my functions I want in terms of Y. So solving for X, Y equals four X will become y over four equals x, and then putting y equals x cubed in terms of y, that's going to be that x equals the cube root of y, or y to the one third equals x. Now let's think of the order in which we want these, because when integrating with respect to y, we want that rightmost function minus our leftmost function. So our rightmost function was that cubic function. So we're going to use y to the one third as our rightmost function, and we're going to subtract y over four. Now let's go ahead and integrate this. y to the one third when integrated, that would be y to the four thirds multiplied by three fourths. So three y to the four thirds over four, and then we'll be subtracting, integrating y over four, that will be y squared over Eight. Now we'll plug in eight and zero. So plugging in eight, we'll have three fourths times, well, it's going to be much easier to take the cube root of eight before we raise it to the fourth. The cube root of eight is two and two to the fourth is 16. So this will be three fourths times 16 minus eight squared over eight is going to leave us with eight. And as you can see, when we plug in zero, both of those terms will be zero, so we'll be subtracting zero. Three fourths times 16 is going to leave us with 12, and 12 minus eight is indeed four. So there, we just double checked ourselves. We got the same exact area, regardless of whether we integrate it with respect to x or with respect to y. So there's not necessarily one right way to go about this. 
Just like up above, if you felt like it, you could have still split this integral up. You could have split this integral and integrated with respect to x, it would have just been more work to get the same exact result. But let's go ahead and look at example 4 now. In example 4, we're going to find the area of the region bounded by y equals the square root of x, y equals x over 2, and y equals negative 2x plus 3. So here you can see here's our positive linear as the blue, that's the y equals x over 2, our green line is negative 2x plus 3, and of course our red is the square root of x. So if the region's bounded by those three, we're going to be dealing with this region here. That's our region R. So now let's think about how we want to integrate this. Do we want to do it with respect to y, or do we want to do it with respect to x? So what I like to do sometimes is take my pencil and hold it up on my paper and move it along in the x direction. So going in the positive x direction, hence vertical rectangle, so integrating with respect to x, if the top part of my function and the bottom part of my function are always the height of my rectangle, then I'll integrate with respect to x. But when doing that for this example, you can see here at about x equals 1, my top function now becomes the green line as opposed to that red line. So when integrating with respect to x, I would have to split this integral up. Now let's test out with y. So if we take our pencil and hold it horizontally and move it in the y direction, I'll start drawing my rectangles down here at 0, but if you notice at about 1 half, my right function switches from the blue to the green. So in this case, regardless of whether I integrate with respect to x or with respect to y, I'm going to have to split this region. And on my paper, you'll notice that I actually provided two graphs. So in this case, we're going to set up each of them, but we're not going to solve. I'll let you solve on your own and you should get the same area for each. But for the sake of time, we'll just go through the setup process. So if we're doing the first one with respect to x, I'll make a note that we're going to do this with respect to x. You can see that our split, where we're going to split our integral, occurs here because my top function changes. So when dealing with x, I'm going to have a region 1 and I'm going to have a region 2. Adding those regions together will give me my entire area. So I'm going to need to find the limits of integration for the first one and for the second region. So for the first region, you can easily see that I'm starting at the point 0, 0. So that's 0 in the x and 0 in the y. And you can confirm by plugging in 0 for x and you'll get the same result for the intersection of my red function, which is the square root of x, and my blue function, which is x over 2. Plugging in 0, we'll get 0 for y. So we'll start at 0. Now I'm curious about this intersection point here. Now to find that intersection point, I need to see when the square root of x is equal to that line with the negative slope. So that's when the square root of x is equal to negative 2x plus 3. So in order to solve, I can square both sides and then simplify down and solve for x. But I can also do this by inspection if I see it looks like x is roughly 1 where that intersection point occurs. So I'm going to double check if this is the case. If I plug in 1 for x, does it indeed equal when I plug in 1 to my other equation? Square root of 1 is 1, and that's going to be equal to negative 2 times 1, which is negative 1 plus 3, which is also indeed 1. So my original guess is correct. Those intersect when x is equal to 1, and obviously plugging 1 in for x gives me a y value of 1 as well. So those two functions intersect at the point 1, 1. If I didn't have this nicely drawn out graph, I would have had to do a little bit more math. But again, that's just a matter of squaring both sides, factoring, and solving. Now, that's my upper bound of my integral, that x value of 1. So within this integral for region 1, my topmost function is the square root of x, and my bottommost function is that blue function, which is x over 2. So I'm going to do the square root of x minus x over 2, 
and integrate that with respect to x. That is my region 1. Now I'm going to add that to my region 2 to get that full region. So region 2 actually picks up where I left off. So that lower bound of integration is going to be 1. Now I just need to find that upper bound, which occurs when my blue line intersects my green line. So I need to see when x over 2 is equal to negative 2x plus 3, which it looks like it occurs at about 1 and a quarter. But let's go ahead and solve this out since I'm not sure. So I'll start by multiplying both sides by 2 to get that x equals negative 4x plus 6. Then I'll add 4x to both sides to get that 5x equals 6. And then I'll divide both sides by 5 to get that x equals 6 fifths. So not even quite 1 and a quarter, a little bit less. So this point here has 6 fifths as its x value. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and solve for y as well since I know I'm going to need that when I set it up our separate way. So plugging in 6 fifths for x, 6 fifths over 2 is 6 over 10. So the y coordinate is 6 tenths. So 6 fifths, 6 tenths is that point of intersection. So our lower bound is going to be 1, and we're going to go all the way to that x value of 6 fifths. And this is going to be, again, with respect to x. So this will give us region 2. When adding those together, we'll get our entire region. For the next region 2, our top function is the green function, which is negative 2x plus 3. And then our bottom function is that blue function, x over 2. So normally from here, I'd simplify down, integrate, and figure out what I get. But for the sake of time, I'll let you do that on your own. However, you should get 7 fifteenths when integrating. If not, double check and find your mistake. Now let's look at setting this up with respect to y. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in all those intersection points because up above, we already took care of those. So we have the point 0, 0. We have the point 1, 1. And we have the point 6 fifths, 6 tenths. Now, in this case, I don't care about my x values for those. I care about my y values because I'm integrating with respect to y. I'm going to be drawing my rectangles horizontally. So thinking about drawing those rectangles horizontally, where does the switch occur? When does either our rightmost function change or our leftmost function change? Well, our rightmost function is going to change at the intersection point of our blue and green functions, so those two linear functions. And it's the rightmost function that's changing. Our leftmost function stays the same throughout this problem. So let's go ahead and we'll label this bottom region, region 1, and the top region will be region 2. Adding those together will give me my entire region. So here's region 1, here is region 2. Now let's go ahead and set this up. Region 1, remember I care about my y coordinate because that's where I'm starting to draw those rectangles in the y. That's going to be 0, and it's going to go until 6 tenths. And I'm integrating this first region with respect to y, as well as the second region also with respect to y. I just have to figure out the starting and stopping point. But just like up above, we're going to pick up where we left off with region 1. So our lower bound is going to be 6 tenths, and our upper bound is going to be 1. So when we're integrating with respect to y, I don't want to see a bunch of x variables mixed into our integral which means we're going to have to rewrite each of our functions. So let's start with writing our rightmost function for region 1. Our rightmost function for region 1 was that y was equal to x over 2, which when solving for x, that means that x is going to be equal to 2y. So we're going to start with 2y, and we're going to subtract, well, that red function represented y equals the square root of x, so x is going to equal y squared. So that function in terms of y is going to be y squared. So there we have it, right minus left, and again this was for region 1. So I'm going to add that 
to the integral for region 2. So our rightmost function we need to figure out, our leftmost function is the same, which is going to be y squared, but that rightmost function, if you remember, was negative 2x plus 3 is equal to y. So when I solve for x, that's going to be y minus 3 over a negative 2, which personally, I care about having my negatives in my numerator, so I'm going to switch this up and have negative y plus 3 divided by a positive 2. So my rightmost function, negative y plus 3 over 2, and I'm going to subtract my leftmost function of y squared. And there we have it. That's region 2. Now, when I actually integrate those and add them together, again, my resulting solution is going to be 7 fifteenths, which, if you remember, is equivalent to integrating with respect to x. And so it doesn't matter which way we split it, as long as we're remembering to adjust our functions and our coordinates depending on what we're integrating with respect to. So with that, we wrap up this example video on finding the area between the two curves. In the next video, we're going to build upon this, so get ready to continue to draw more rectangles, except in the next video, we're going to be finding the volume. But as you see as your lessons continue and you continue with these example videos, you're going to see a lot of right minus left or top minus bottom. So keep that in mind when continuing on. And I think the best way to do this is to draw out a picture. So if you're not given one, draw one out just so you can see it visually to double check your work. But until next video, good luck with your online learning.